Welcome to the first of two group judging sessions this evening. This is the judging of the working group. We've got the pastoral group to come as well to determine who will join the French Bulldog, the Papillon and the Weimarama in Best in Show on Sunday evening. Frank, we've got our judge in the arena. Yes, our judge Paul Harding hails from Manchester and he and his wife Maria have owned champion Bulldogs, French Bulldogs and the Kita. He's travelled all over the world judging dogs widely experienced in all of these working breeds so i'm sure he's looking forward to this working group and well the working group these dogs are as the name suggests dogs built for work to assist humans in a very specific line of duty and here's the first of them the largest of the group the alaskan malamute the largest of the sled dogs the bernese mounted dog comes in developed in switzerland very popular here in the arena tonight big cheer and here's the Bouvier, the cattle dog from Belgium. And now we have the best three boxers. The boxer hails from Germany, of course, 139 of them at Crufts this year. Now we have the best three bull mastiff. There's the bull mastiff coming through today. Saw him we winning in the ring. Dog breeds, the Canadian Eskimo dog. Just 23 Canadian Eskimo dogs this year, the ancient sled dog of the Canadian Arctic. And now we welcome our best of breed Doberman. Here's the Doberman, familiar face. He won the group last year. Going for two out of two. The dog de Bordeaux. The dog de Well, originally coming from France. Very robust and now we breed. Have our breed German pincher. And there's the German pincher, little farm dog from Germany. Please welcome the giant Schnauzer best of breed. Well, bred from the standard Schnauzer, this is the best of breed giant Schnauzer, a uh, dog of great stamina. And next up, we have our Great Dane. Oh, the, there's the Great Dane. Look at the elegance of this one coming in. The greatest Swiss mountain dog is our next best of breed into the ring. This is the great Swiss mountain dog, which is the largest of the Swiss herding and now breeds. And our Greenland dog best of breed. Uh, one of the rarer breeds, the Greenland dog. Now it's the turn of the Hovervarts. Well, this is the, the German word Hof, meaning farm, and the homestead Vart, the Hovervarts. 56 of them here this year. The Here's a big winner, the Leonberger, another German breed. And now the turn of the Mastiff. Big cheer for the Mastiff as well, dog of great Follow presence, but not the greatest the speed. And here's the Neapolitan Mastiff. There's a forbidding picture. Welcome the Newfoundland. Get bigger and heavier, the Newfoundland. Big cheers for this one, coming in with great style. And the best of breed, Portuguese water dog. And the Portuguese water dog following on now. Our best of breed, Rottweiler. In comes the Rottweiler, nearly 150 of them at Kraft. It's a popular breed. Followed by our Russian Black Terrier. Ah, oh, the <laughs> imposing figure of the Russian Black Terrier. Now the turn of the St Bernard. Well, a familiar breed to many, the famous St. Bernard. 52 of them at Crufts this year. Had a great win today, yes. Our best of breed, Siberian Husky. Oh, st elegance and style in the Siberian Husky. Please welcome the Tibetan Mastiff. In comes the Tibetan <laughs> Mastiff, and I just love that rough <laughs> around the, the neck, the big mane, impressive, impressive. We welcome the Book of Mountain Here's dog. the Entelbusha Mountain Dog, the smallest of the Swiss breeds. So all of our dogs, best of breeds from the working group, are in the arena. And Frank, I mean, these are all dogs who are very much bred for working purpose, whether that's land uh, or sea, land or water, specifically bred to work and help humans. Yes, and although societies change and many of them have become redundant from their original function, they were, became domesticated and they uh, bond formed with their owners, and now many of them live just as very good household companions. So our judge Paul Harding, as always, is going to be looking to see how these dogs measure up to the Kennel Club's breed standard. And also, though, importantly, talking about their function. Are they still fit for function? Could they still perform that role well, they were that, bred that's for? Well, that's a very important element in all the breed standards. You know, standards were designed to give the dog the, the anatomy it needed to do its job. All the Some of these breeds are, are familiar, aren't they? The St. Bernard, famously, the Newfoundland. 
and then others that you know you see less often and, and fewer numbers here at Cruft as well, which will come to as we see these dogs one by one. Our judge just taking his look, first look at the dogs, looking at their outline and balance, their heads and expression, all part of pre-type. So taking his first glance at all of these dogs before he can come forward to have a look at the first of this working group. So here we go with the first of our working breeds to be judged, and it's the Alaskan Malamute. Always a strong entry. In and there's our first dog, the Alaskan the Malamute best of breed. This is the strongest of the northern sled dog. It takes its name from the tribe of Eskimos, the Malamutes. It was bred to pull heavy loads over long distances. It's not a speed dog, it's a stamina dog, and built strongly, weatherproof coat, furred ears, and a tail which gives it protection when curled up in the snow. That tail is such a distinctive feature, isn't it? And you see it carried like a, a waving plume uh, when it's working. Even but very sturdy, frank, heavy boned, and of course so powerfully built to get that propulsion. It, yes, and working. apart from pull, pulling sleds, they were also very good guard dogs. So great bond with their owners, and the tail should be carried like a waving plume. That's a very important feature, not too tight, waving loosely. This is the five-year-old coming from Sale in Cheshire. Strength and substance, and built for the climate. Well, the Bernese Mountain Dog was developed in Switzerland, taking its name from the canton of Bern. And one of the four Swiss mountain dogs with that distinctive black and tan colouring and that white chest, which as some say represents the cross on the Swiss flag. A judge going over, feeling the anatomy under the coat, the strong bone, the good ribs. This a beautiful, beautiful winner. And it's had some great success. It was world winner last year, best of breed at the World Show, and won best in show at the Swiss Breed Show. That's two great wins, two very specialist shows. Oh, will it catch the eye of, of our judge here? Bushy tail is a real feature, Frank, isn't it? They, they are wonderful family dogs. Lovely, soft expressions, loyal to their owners. And here, beautiful proportions, carrying its level top line, that little white tip to the tail. A champion dog, then. Originally, this breed bred, bred to pull so carts for the weavers. Is the Bouvier de Pondre. There was an entry of 35. And now the Bouvier, the Belgian cattle dog. Bouvier means cattle dog, and for centuries he's also done that job, but also pulled carts and been a very good guard dog. He may have Schnauzer and Beauceron in his ancestry. Almost distinct in the World War I. He is very strongly, strongly built, and this thick matte coat. You can hardly get your fingers through the coat to feel the body. Interesting, though, it's so thick, but it doesn't shed the feature of the breed. Now, and it's meant to have a slightly unkempt look, isn't it, according to the breed standards? Yes, and a strong head and strong muzzle. As I said, almost extinct after World War I, and an, a, a vet found this some... some Remaining specimens to rebuild the breed again. This female is just 16 months old and has come over from Northern Ireland. There were 139 boxers here today for Judge Claire. Three year old best of breed boxer is here. The smooth coated, very family friendly dog. Uh, very loyal to its owners, but also very fearless and has that real guarding instinct. German breed which was used to hunt bear, boar and deer. It has its origins in the old German breed, the Bullenbeißer, a hunting dog used on wild boar, deer and bear. In the late 19th century it was crossed with the English Bulldog and that was the ancestry of the modern boxer we see here. Now wonderfully versatile, they can, they can do agility, obedience, they've been used by the armed forces, but above all they are fantastic house dogs, great characters. This one a lovely brindle and white, we also see them in red and white. This one called Sparkles as well, lighting up the arena. 
first brought to England after World War II when soldiers brought them back from Germany, and they've been a very, very welcome addition. Now the Bull Mastiff, his name tells us his origins, the Bulldog and the Mastiff crossed. Now, the the it was the gamekeeper's night dog, used to protect country estates from poachers. This one is a red, a rich red color. Brindle was the favored color in the early days because they were camouflage and could give those poachers a nasty shock when they came out of the undergrowth. Now, this one had a very, very good win today. Tough competition in the breed ring. This one bred in Italy, but owned here in Shropshire. And what do you expect, Frank, from the, the, the lips are quite a distinctive feature, aren't they? The yeah. flues. We, we, we want a, a strong head, a fairly short muzzle, big nostrils, okay? And it's important that the dog is substantial, but also athletic. You should be able to jump a five-barred gate. Two-year-old Canadian Esky dog. These are the ancient sled dogs of the Canadian Arctic. Now, these ones built for distance work rather than speed. And this is a fairly rare breed. Just 23 of them here at Crufts today. And this one fairly lively too. And it's another dog which is fit for function. Everything about it, its coat, its protective coat, the fur inside the ears, that tail plumed over the back again. I'm looking for a really brisk trot here with those front and rear legs moving in line. And another thick, dense undercoat. Again, this is another breed which nearly went extinct. Only 200 of them left, and then the Canadian Kennel Club stepped in and set up a breeding station with Canadian Eskimos. There he is. Two years old from South Staffordshire. And there's the striking, clean outline of the Doberman. Beautiful, wedge-shaped head, the judge just going down its shoulders to feel the correct angulation, the depth of the chest, and running his hands along the top line to a high set tail. What a striking outline. This is a breed which takes its name from the man who developed the breed, the German tax collector, Louis Doberman. Greyhound, Manchester Terrier, Rottweiler, and German Shepherd blood. To get a combination of in the 19th century, he set about producing a dog that would protect him on his rounds of collecting money and perhaps and persuade and those difficult clients to pay up. He used a German pincher, which was a vermin hunter, with some greyhound and terrier in the mix, and here's what he ended with. This squarely built dog, lovely, clean, slightly sloping top line, striking colours, black and tan, they also come in liver and tan. And you might remember this Doberman as Archie because he was the group winner last year, going for two and two. This is the Dog de Bordeaux given championship status by the Kennel Club in 2016. It originally existed in France in the 14th century, but a lot of dogs were killed in the French Revolution. But it did make a good return in the late 20th century. Existed in France as far back as the 14th century. They're smaller than the bull mastiff, it's, it's, but he, he does have some bull mastiffs in his background. It was needed to uh, revive the breed after it became almost extinct. Oh, just oh, is uh, <laughs> full of fun, not face here and wanting a little romp around the arena. Anyway, does that impact what the judge might determine? <laughs> no, it just shows a very nice temperament. Here we've got the stronger head than the bull mastiff, more wrinkle and more lip and a distinctive top line. It's not a completely level top line. It rises to the croup. Interesting, we see the dog lowering its head on the move. That's very typical gait for this breed. is the German Pinscher. Our breed judge today was King Baldwin. And here is the German Pincher, the middle size. We saw the miniature Pincher in the toy group yesterday. We've got the Doberman. They're all related. This one is the was the German. The word German word Pincher means to rip or to tear or to seize, and that's what it used to do. It was a vermin catcher. Smart, squarely built. I'm surprised that this is a breed which is not more popular. It's easy to maintain. Great characters and great personality. 
Well, there were 34 of them here at Crufts today, and the judge will be looking for an elegant and flowing outline. That coat should be short and dense, smooth, and those V-shaped ears that folded down, as you can see there, close to the head. This one, a seven-year-old, and going really well here, striding out. Well, this giant schnauzer was reserved best bitch at Crufts last year. So here as best of breed, and the schnauzer is a dog of great stamina and endurance. And its original function was to drive cattle in Munich. This one coming reverse, successful kennel from Selby in North Yorkshire. This German breed, beautiful, the tallest of the Schnauzer family. It was developed by crossing the standard Schnauzer with the Great Dane, perhaps with some Rottweiler or Bouvier blood. Anyway, it's a versatile dog. It's been used by the armed forces, by the police. Also used as a cattle drover on the farms. And those chin whiskers are no a notable feature of the breed, aren't they? We're getting a great, great look at them there. That's our best of breed. Should have a lot of substance, deep chest, good fore chest, and really striding out. Next in this working group, it's the Great Dane. Our charge today was what a wonderful dogs. outline! The Great Dane, the Apollo amongst dogs, statuesque and handsome, but the name is misleading. He's not a Danish dog; it's a German breed, and he was originally a. a Boar hunter. Look at this beautiful head, elegant neck, there's size and elegance and substance combined in the Great Day. And they do make great family dogs, though, Frank, don't they? Such big size, they're friendly and outgoing and popular here in the arena. And looking for a majestic action here, dignified, that long neck. And this is a beautiful move. I saw it winning the breed, and it really carried itself elegantly. It said that the Great Dane should have dash and dare, be ready to go anywhere. And this epitomizes that. Beautiful carriage. This lovely long stride and level top line, that's a lovely picture. Come all the way from Norway to win here. Well, now this is the largest of the Swiss herding breeds, the great Swiss mountain dog. It's the heaviest in build, and you see it shares that sort of typical, the tricolour with the Bernese, but the coat is denser and shorter, and its original function was for pulling milk and cheese carts, as well as being a herding dog and a guard dog. So we saw the Bernese Mountain Dog earlier. This has almost the same standard apart from the coat and the same purpose. I've been in Switzerland when they've had festival days and these breeds parade through the streets pulling milk carts and with their owners in national dress. It's a fantastic sight. Wonderful, wonderful temperaments, loyal and make great house pets. That's our best of breed, Great Swiss Mountain Dog, 10487. This is a three-year-old who has travelled here all the way from Massachusetts Next in the USA. Group, it's the Greenland dog. Our judge today was Espen M from Norway, from a breed entry of eight. Espen awarded best of breed to this bitch, number 10498. This is the only surviving... And the judge now going over the Greenland dog. And this is, this is a special dog. It's government protected. It's the only surviving native breed of Greenland after the Greenland Husky was wiped out by an epidemic. To protect this breed, the government of Greenland banned the importation of dogs to keep the population pure. And here we have the survivors. But like them... His physical features and coats equip him for a life well, This is a three-year-old female. You find the males are much larger in this breed than the females. But yeah, that, that coat, uh, impenetrable uh, undercoat. It should be uniform across the body and the outer coat with longer, coarser hair and then a little shorter on the head and legs. Best of breed, Greenland dog, number one, zero, Traditionally zero, a sled dog, but also used for steel hunting, for seal hunting. And the next breed to be judged is the Hoverbart. Deborah Penistin Fleming was the designated breed judge today. 
Well, this particular Hovervart was reserve best of breed at Crufts in 2023, so it's gone one better in 2024. This is four-year-old Rebel, uh, and the Hovervart well, dates back to the Middle Ages, almost suffered extinction in the 20th century, uh, but thankfully saved by a keen breeder called Kurt Koenig. By the start of the 20th century. And this one, very handsome. It's a blonde in color. The breed also comes in black and black and gold. The word Hof means farm and Vat to guard, so it is the guardian of the farm. Versatile on the farm, it can be also a carting dog, herding dog, a multi-purpose and a very nice temperament. Carrying itself nicely, the tail arched over the back, happy temperament. Effortless mu movement is what the judge is looking for. Wonderful example. We now move on to the Liam Berger, a further breed for Judge Jeff Forswell today. And, his best and he's a dog with some form, the Leon Berger. It's the, the emblem of the town of Leonberg in Germany. And he was developed through the crossing of a Bernie, of a St. Bernard and a Newfoundland. And he's got characteristics of each. A lot of substance, but lion-like lion in its color. The judge just going over the anatomy, feeling the strength of the bone, the ribs. You can see this on the, em the coat of arms of the town and also on the flag. That's such a muscular breed, isn't it? And the judge will be looking for a, a confident, a calm demeanour. And if you think, well, it sort of looks quite lion-like. That was the aim, wasn't it? As a guard dog that almost resembled a lion. It's be intimidating. So Leon Berger, the lion-like dog. This one is a best in show winner. He's won several working groups, so he's the form dog in this group tonight. Wonderful stride, great top line. To get size and substance and athleticism, this is the dog. This is a, a champion dog, a mastiff. The dog, the breed, dates back to Roman times. It was then a guard dog, hunting dog, and a fighting dog uh, as well. Real robust body, that square look to the head. It is on the vulnerable native breed list. There are 53 here today at Crufts. The Romans took some of these massive types home with them. And this is a very impressive one. It goes back to Roman times. When they arrived here in 55 BC, the natives already had a large, mastiff-like dog. They fought with the Romans' dogs and defeated them. They were so impressed they took them back to Rome and they were used, sadly, in the Colosseum to fight wild animals. This one, a big winner, it's got size and substance, it's also very sound, which is why it's had some success in the groups. This is five-year-old Bertie from East Sussex. Next we see the Neapolitan master. Graham Hill was our green judge today and awarded... Now the Neam, Neapolitan master, described by one writer as a grotesque beauty. The Neapolitan Mastiff is believed to have led the Roman legions into battle wearing thick spiked collars and used as a ferocious weapon and as a fighting dog. Look at this imposing feature, but also look at the wagging tail there. It's a very happy dog. Great success in the ring. It's got this... It's a molossa, which means it's a mastiff type with a large head, a broad muzzle. They have a little bit more... They have a little bit more skin than the other mastiffs, but the breeders have worked hard to rid it, rid, rid it of exaggeration. There are only 11 of them here at Crufts today. Uh, this one, Taro, was best of breed here in 2020 and 2022, so will it be third time lucky? And that very typical top line and lowering its head carriage. Well, these are the giant working water dogs from Canada, the Newfoundland breed. You often see these working uh, as search and rescue water dogs at rescuing swimmers in distress. This is a four-year-old reggae who's come from France. His versatility has served man well. And this one really impressed me when it came in. It's a, it looks a beautiful type, that lovely silhouette, the strong head, 
lovely clean neck and top line. It looks as though it's got a lot of substance under that coat, which is very important. A, a multi-purpose rescue and water dog used to help the fishermen bring in the nets and bring in the boats. It's got web feet, big ribs to give it flotation in the water. Again, the dog which is fit for function. Great family dog as well. And listen to the cheers for this. This is really going very well. Well, this is a champion dog. Next Reggae from France. Also a great family dog as well. The judge will look for a docile nature. Best of breed was awarded to this dog, number 1097. Now, the Portuguese water dog, 57 of them here today. This is another versatile water dog developed in the Algarve. It used to help the fishermen hauling in nets, driving shoals of fish into the nets, so he's really a herder, a herder of fish. So, and a messenger dog between boats, and it uses a foghorn barking to, to, to avoid collisions. And there are two types, Frank, aren't there? The, you get the shorter hair variety and the longer hair variety as well, with these feathered ears and more loosely waved. But, but they have this functional tri trim. The hindquarters are clipped short. There's a plume over the tail to protect the end from the cold water. This one coming from a very successful kennel. They won the breeder's stakes last night. Very typical, that arch of the tail over the back Sorry, and that free stride. Well, there were 145 Rottweilers uh, in Crufts this year, and this six-year-old Nesco won through as best of breed, a territorial dog, uh, protective of its owner and property. See, often in the armed forces and the police, but also does make a great family companion as well. The breed was developed in Germany. The town of Rottweil was a, 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 a livestock trading place, and the breed was left there by Romans who were traveling through Europe, and the breed was developed there. Comes in this black and tan color, this dense coat. Now, they do make good household companions, but they need good owners, sensible owners, because they're strong dogs. I feel there might be a few Rottweiler owners in the arena tonight. Some big cheers for this one. from the Netherlands, who from entry of 41 selected this dog as his best of breed, number one. And here is the Russian Black Terrier. 41 of them here today. A relatively modern breed. They first appeared at a dog show in Moscow in 1955. They were pur purposely bred after World War II by a Russian army breeding station. They wanted a guarding dog who could round up fugitives from the army. They are a very strong breed. They've got giant Schnauzer and Rottweiler and Airedale in the mix. And this thick, dense coat. Yeah, weatherproof again to perform its function. And those heavy eyebrows that the beard that you mentioned, that the different breeds, you can really see it in the mix, can't you? And a strong head and thick lips and strong bite. Your best of breed, Russian Black Terrier, 11142. Again, a, a big dog, but also athletic. And now we see this a Bernard, judged today by Lawn Alliance. Best of breed was this dog, number 11198, from an entry of 52 St. Bernard's. This is the muscular is the outline of the St. Bernard. Bernard. Instantly recognisable, an iconic breed, the, the mountain rescue dog. Uh, not quite wanting to pay attention to the judge just now, but a dog of real great substance and courage in performing its work. First dogs were Alpine Mastiffs. Initially used to guard property. But with now, just a little bit unsettled here, which is a great pity because I saw it winning the breed and it looked beautiful. It's perhaps it's the arena which has just distracted it. I think she's re retired it because day. it's unsettled. That's a great pity for that. That was three year old uh, Cole. What a shame. Travelled here from Poland. Well, that's a great shame because it's a be beautiful example of the breed. So we now move on to the Siberian Husky. So we move on to the Siberian Husky, and what a lovely picture of that lovely molded head, the, the small pricked ears, and that dense coat. They're all functional features. The Siberian Husky. 
Now, this is a dog which has to be quite light. It's the fastest of the sled dogs. It came from northeast Siberia and it was used by the Chukchi Eskimos and it was called the Chukchi Sled Dog. And of course, this is the dog that wins all the sled races, the fastest of the sled dogs. Looking for effortless movement there. You can imagine how it would just perform when in harness. Number 11378. What a lovely picture. Lovely carriage, light on its feet. They are the lightest of the dogs. Well, Tibetan Mastiffs were originally bred to protect both livestock and homesteads and they are the largest of the tibetan breed so hugely impressive to see and this is a four-year-old dog from france called ron ron and the tibetan mastiffs were often tethered at the entrance of a property he won the breed here last year and i saw him winning today he's very imposing that thick mane of hair down its shoulders and down its front excellent bone and feet and he's remarkably light on his feet this strong head. It's thought that the Tibetan Mastiff is the patriarch of all the Mastiff breeds. It goes back to ancient Tibet, where he was often kept chained at the gate to the farm with a great guard dog. And he is wary of strangers. That's a nice way of saying it. That's a nice way of saying it, but what a lovely dog. Displaying real powerful and, and free movement and must show purpose so and agility. In this working group 2024 is the winner of the import register. The and here's the Entelbuscher Mountain and Dog, the smallest of the four breeds of Swiss Mountain Dog. <laughs> Having a little wary look at the judge going over her there. Same tricolor pattern as the Bernese. It came from the Entelbush Valley where it was used as a herding dog, bringing cattle down from the mountains to the summer pasture. It would also guard the herds. This one has a full tail, but the breed, you can get them as natural bobtails. It's now, now settled and going well. Young Handler doing a very good job with her dog here. The smallest of the four breeds of Swiss Mountain Dog. Judge looking for free and easy movement with good drive from those hind quarters. Well, our Judge Paul Harding has had a good look now at all the best of breeds in the working group, and we'll find out in a moment who the shortlist is going to be. This is a long day, and it's a show like no other. Sometimes nerves can run away. So the shortlist is coming out now. The Alaskan Malamute is out, the Bernese Mountain Dog, the Boxer, and the Bull Mastiff, and the Doberman. Down the line, he's going to the Leon Burger. Here comes that impressive Newfoundland. Long walk. And the Tibetan Mastiff comes out, that very imposing picture of a Tibetan Mastiff. So there is our shortlist. Eight dogs to compete for best in the working group. Well done to all of you. What a pity that uh, the lovely St. Bernard was unsettled in the big ring atmosphere. I did like it a lot. But that's important though, Frank, isn't it, to withdraw the dog if there is any sign. Absolutely the correct decision. She doesn't want to get the dog further upset. It must be a great disappointment, but she did the right thing. Right, so we have our shortlist now to find out who is going to win the working group and join the French Bulldog, the Papillon and the Weimarana in best in show on Sunday night. I think the judge is going to send them out and back to check the movement, the strong hawks driving away from him. This one comes from a big winning kennel, the Cheo Kennel from Sale in Cheshire. Sue Ellis Payne, the breeder there, handing her. That waving plume of a tail, very correct and very strong in the hocks and hindquarters. The Bernese Mountain Dog is called Ellington, four and a half years old, here from Sweden, is a champion dog as well, a world winner last year and has won in Switzerland too. Uh, and it's uh, again very impressive, a huge entry, 24 champions in the dog class today. Here's the boxer, Brindle Boxer, bitch from Ireland, strutting her stuff. 
just looking a little casual there coming back to the judge but very happy to, <laughs> looking round and here is that bull mastiff phil we need to point out here the name ron weasley which i'm sure <laughs> is to do with the color of the coat yeah, and he's just called ron for sure <laughs> yes yes bred in italy and ah uh, last year's winner man's out wise guy and a very clever breeder here well was the group winner and going for group winner two years in a row now real chance of making it to best in show again here's the form dog the leon burger the lion colored dog the mascot of leon berg in southwestern germany He's remarkable for his movement, the strong hocks and lovely stride in front. Difficult to get in this breed. We'll see the Newfoundland move. Reggae, four years of age, getting a big cheer oh. in the arena. Multinational champion dog. And this has great style. I like this very much. He's really putting on a show here. Big webbed feet pounding across the carpet and talk about impressive here is that tibetan mastiff what what a picture he makes amazing for that substance and size that lightness on his feet the carriage and the tail over the back so correct in type yep, the handler described ron ron as a dog with great temperament and loves to show right the boards are coming out that means our judge has made his decision and we'll find out shortly who is the winner of the working group. Oh, purposeful. The Leonberger, the Leonberger has won the group. He's a, he is a best in show winner all breeds. Oh, look, it's a bit, second time in a row. He was second in the group last year, second again here. Third place, that lovely Newfoundland. A great show, and there's the Alaskan Malamute coming out into reserve. So what, four lovely dogs in those placings there. But it's the Leon Berger who will come back tomorrow night to compete for best in show. Well, it's the fourth in our lineup after the French Bulldog, the Papillon, the Weimarama. Let's have a listen. How are you feeling right now? Got smacked. Shocked. Now, you've done a lot of winning with this Leo, haven't you? So tell us a little bit about yourself and this dog. Just, he's the man. He's, he's my goofball. Um, yeah, never lets me down. He's a good lad. Love him. He certainly didn't let you down in there, but I'm not sure he'd like you being calling him a goofball. Oh, he is at home. He is. Um, we have foster children, so he is the big teddy bear for them. And, yeah, um, the Maltese, they boss him around and yeah we like that we like that well he looks really content there and now you're gonna have to get ready for best in show tomorrow has this even crossed your mind like ever no never <laughs> well many congratulations ladies and gentlemen the winner of the working group the Leon Berger well the Leon Berger this is Neville no, from Great Yarmouth great three years of age and what a fabulous accolade now to be through to best in show Bring in the presentation party of Mr. Carl Hester, MBE, the famous three times Olympian. And you see the Tibetan Mastiff standing the right impassively the there, very impressive. Speaker of the House of Commons to present the prizes to our group winner. Well, Neville already is a champion dog. 27 challenge certificates. I'm sure you'll agree. That Owned by Lee Studholm, who's handling, tonight. and Kerry Rushby, who's been in the breed for a lot of years. Right, the trophy over. Yeah. Quite amazing. Should we put it on the floor? Yeah. Uh, trophy, group trophy going out. Solid gold group trophy. The winner will get a replica of that to keep. More than me. Well, there's a wonderful story we heard there about the fact that there are foster children at home and they look at Leon Berger here. Neville is a giant teddy bear for them. Here is the... Uh, and, that, the prize for reserve. and he was another very popular dog with the crowded audience tonight, yes. <laughs> Look at that lovely temperament standing there. Ron Ron, the four-year-old, he's travelled over from France. He's top dog in all breeds in France in 2022 and 23, so plenty of success, Frank. Which is amazing for a relatively rare breed. Wonderful Newfoundland in third place, and there's the Alaskan Malamute getting its trophy. Sue Ellis Payne, 
very happy there to be placed All in this strong group. Yep. Five-year-old Layla, who's the Alaskan tonight. Malamute from Sale in Cheshire. And I believe we're very shortly going to have a Cheeky, loving and, and full of fun. A girl's girl.